So the point that I'm trying to get at, not just from the point of view of the outside of the Qur'an in Arabic literature in general, but also even inside the Qur'an, the word Amr doesn't just occur in the meaning of commanding. It actually occurs in the meaning of suggesting or advising or in, you know, or encouraging or even on top of that, it can be in the meaning of commanding also. You know, so Allah Azza wa Jal says, for example, Himself, يَأْمُرُكُمْ Allah commands you, Allah instructs you and to addul amanati ila ahliha that you give the, the, the rights to those who deserve them, the trust to those who deserve them. Now, this is an important distinction. What that means then, let me just give you in, by way of an example because talking in theory can become hard to understand. Let's say it's the first day of class and I have a bunch of students. Third grade, some of them are well behaved, some of them not so much, right? And some of them are struggling with, with discipline, some of them are not. I'm just beginning to understand these kids. It's going to take me a little while. And they're going to get used to my way of dealing with things and my discipline. And over time, I'm going to, I won't lay down the hammer at first. I'm going to try to figure out how everybody behaves and what their issues are and where their anger may be coming from, where their violent behavior in class might be coming from, why they're always so loud, why they're always, you know, Get, you know, uh, being obnoxious, etc. So I might take one of those kids after class and say, Hey, so I notice you make a lot of fun of your friends. Why do you think that is? You know, instead of embarrassing him in front of everybody, I'll take him to the side and talk to him a little bit. And then over time, I might see a change in that one student's behavior. Right? And then over time, as I develop a relationship with that student, the next time he's misbehaving, I can just say, Hey, Omar. Sorry if there's Omar in the audience. Hey, Omar. And he'll just, you remember what we talked about? And he could just get it. He gets it now. Because we went from me slowly advising him, beginning to understand him, to a point where I can actually even just look at him and he'll know, okay, okay. Sorry, Stad. Sorry. I know, I know, I know. And he gets it. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't, it, I couldn't do that the first day. And if I did, in fact, even if he obeyed me on the first day, he would develop a resentment towards me. And it's not something that would benefit him. If, if me as a teacher, I just want obedience in the classroom, I can get it. But if I want the student to actually transform and to see the error in their ways and to actually feel like I care about them, I'm actually doing this for their own good, then that's gonna take some while. And I might not start with commanding. I might start with advising. I might start with suggesting. I might start with putting my hand over their shoulder, but with some compassion. Some, some listening also from them. This is an important part of the process if I really have somebody else's well-being in mind. But if I just want to make sure I win an argument, then I can just throw some things in their face, threaten them to go take them to the principal's office, and I'll be done with it. My job is still done. I still taught a class. I didn't do anything illegal, right? But the point is, I'm missing something very, very fundamental. So that's a little bit about the word Amr. And when we think about doing amr to something good, who am I doing it to? Do I care about this person or do I just want to win an argument? Do I want to embarrass this person, humiliate this person? Do I just want to show the world how wrong they are? What is my motivation for correcting them? What is my, and who am I saving, right? And this becomes a really important question to ask myself when I'm embarking on a journey to correct somebody else or to advise somebody else. The other thing is when you meet someone for the first time, and you're like, well, you know, before I become friends, what's your take on this issue, this issue, this issue, and this issue, so I can gauge how much amr bil ma'roof I need to do with you before I can become, I can treat you as a dignified human being. Let me know your stance on all of these issues so we know where we stand exactly. That's not how human relationships work. You have to treat someone like a dignified human being and you're not in the back of your head. If you're thinking, I'm going to get to know this person a little better so that by the time I get to know them, then I'm going to drop some Amr bin Ma'roof on them. This is a very condescending, self-righteous, you got it figured out and you need to save the rest of the world kind of attitude. And Allah Azza wa says, فَلَا تُزَكُّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't consider yourselves so pure. وَأَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ التَّقَى Allah knows better who has taqwa. We, we've got this idea, we've got it figured out, everybody else needs to get on board. Right? So there's that other attitude that comes with it.